athlete you are or what type of a team player you are. And so what we did was we are helping people to look at it through a different lens. Um, we focus in on Lean Six Sigma, which is a process improvement methodology as well as a philosophy. And so for us, it's helping people to be able to see um, constraints, to be able to see bottlenecks, to be able to see where they have opportunities so that they can increase their customer satisfaction, you know, increase their customer retention. And so we do that by allowing people to take a look inward. You know, oftentimes as leaders, we have a blueprint, and so we follow the plan. But until you stop and take inventory, self-awareness inventory, um, to be able to say, this is where I need more help. This is an area where I need to have improvement. Then you are literally looking at what area do you need to focus in on. A lot of times we look at our, our strengths and our weaknesses and we want to get better in our weaknesses as opposed to getting better in the strengths. And then bringing people on that can complement you on those things where you're not so good at. And so this allows an individual to put together a plan that they can develop that literally takes them from this is a area that I see that needs improvement now. How do we improve this particular area? So leaders are not only great leaders of people, but they're also leaders that can help companies by reducing costs, by helping to increase their employee engagement, which is something, you know, during this pandemic, you know, when companies are looking at how do we save, oftentimes it's training, it's marketing, you cut out those elements, and that's how companies decide to save their income or save their revenue. Those are the two most critical pieces that you can have as a company is to continue to employ your employees to be better at their jobs, to give them tools and resources that will allow them to do that, to take an investment in their development so that they can continue to ascend in the companies. And so I have been working with businesses to help them see the benefits of even during this time to still help develop the skill sets of their employees so that these employees can then help them with cost reduction and working on satisfying the customers more. And so that's been a huge, huge initiative for us. Um, it has been a educational initiative. When people think of process improvements, they typically think of manufacturing and engineering. And so we have simplified the concept so that it can be for a small business. It can be for an individual's personal development. So there's opportunities for individuals to use it to benefit not only their professional career, but their personal careers. And so we've had, um, we're just now getting enrollment into that particular experience. And so we're excited about that. And the individuals that are partaking in it are excited because it's not something that they've done before. A lot of assessments, after you take them, you can always say, oh, I already knew that, right? But this is one of the uh, assessments that we have is similar to a Mad Lib. And it was created by a psychologist, and it's based on self-development. And so after completing that, I guarantee one thing that they will not say is, I already knew that. <laughs> Well, and it sounds sometimes it's so familiar that you just disregard the importance of it, right? It wasn't mm -hmm. until people have to say the ugly truth sometimes that you can actually get, um, you know, well, you're you're moved to make change, right? You have to be in enough pain. It's the old exactly. Gleisher's formula, right? To be willing to actually make change occur. Exactly. You know, there's that saying, um, who's the author? Um, John Allen, and it is as a man think it, and it says people want to change their circumstances, but they're unwilling to improve themselves. So that goes right. exactly to what you were saying, is that you literally have to say, you know, today is the day. Right. Well, and so, Eric, before we go, um, tell us a bit about your uh, approach to this and, and how what you bring to this conversation and the people that yeah. we're helping. Yeah, sure. So, 
Uh, because I work at the intersection between emotional intelligence, leadership development, and professional development, I'm able to narrow my focus on organizations that are looking to improve in those specific areas. And so I think the, the crazy thing, I think the most eye-opening thing that I've, um, I've observed through um, even before COVID and actually during you know, my virtual events is that um, when, when people um, are looking you know, for a half, you know, my signature, how to work with your program, a lot of times the thing, the message is, yeah, those other people, you, we need this, you know, we need you to talk about this because it's those other people. It's those people who are jerks. It's not me. It's these people that get on my nerves. But once I start talking about the definition of who a jerk is, which is in the book, it's, it's someone who doesn't use social skills as a necessary job skill, people go, aha, oh, but wait a second. That means that, yeah, that means that you can be a jerk as well. And so once I take them on a ride from self-awareness and help them spot the, 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 the triggers and the pitfalls of how, you, how lacking those social skills um, can resonate into and can translate into being a jerk, then we start uncovering the techniques that you need in order to build those relationships with the people that you work with and serve. And so even before COVID, um, you know, this was a big issue, but now it's even it's 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 an even bigger issue that needs to be resolved because, as you know, you know we're relying mostly on our you know remote um, capabilities to 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 work with each other, and because of that, sometimes you lack that face to face connection, you lack that ability to um, observe body language. You can't really capture everything in a in a, in a Skype call or or a Zoom call. Um, that's not really um, that you can't really observe in in, in the um, in a meeting room, and so because of that, you know, there's a big demand. Of, well, how do I get along with this person, or or how how can I get my company um, members to be more engaged? Um, because I can't really tell what's going on. You know, they're, they're they're not really you know doing what I think they need to do. You know, that they hit on mark things like that. Well, then we start t- talking about what they can do and some of these interesting tactics that they can do in order to manage those relationships. You know, I talk about the three-step process called the Set, Analyze, Act. Um, and it, it really takes you on a three-step process to first really assess, you know, where, you know, what the conflict is and what how your body's responding. And then you take that step two, which is analyze. You know, well, it kind of helps you connect the dots. Well, my body, my heart's beating fast, my palms are sweaty because um, I can't get this employee to... Um, to, to, to be more productive or because my, um, my, my boss gave me this, um, this bad performance review and so, or because I'm late for work and I've got all these meetings coming up, you know, that allows you to assess and then analyze. And then once you can do that, you're more aware of what's going on. Then you can take that the third step, which is act, which is to provide a more measured approach, a more thoughtful approach with how you respond to that specific um, conflict. So these are certain things that, for some of them, for some people, it kind of reminds them of some of the things that they need to do um, for, for self-awareness. But for others, it's one of those, aha, you know, I didn't realize I was acting that way. I didn't realize that that's what I needed in order to secure this, you know, this funding project. Um, I, needed, I need to make sure that, you know, everyone is on the same page. We have team synergy. We have all these items. So um, I take people on a nice, interesting ride um, from being, from understanding what creates a jerk environment and how you can become a jerk to what you need to do to stop being a jerk and to um, focus on the task at hand. Well, I am so glad that both of you are out there and um, and that you're doing the work that you do. It's so important. And um, info at, uh, sorry, info and rising, oh, sorry, rising hyphen and hyphen shining.com will be in the show notes and eric your website to reach you www.tailoredtrainingsolutions.com tailoredtrainingsolutions.com everybody and um, thank you both so much for this incredible conversation that we got to have together. Um, there's so much valuable stuff to unpack here. I know that everybody will get so much out of it. And the book, How to Work with Jerks, by Eric Williamson. And uh, Cheryl, would you like to plug a book real quick? 
Absolutely. Silence in the Chatter Monsters. Move beyond your fear. Um, it's available on Amazon, and it is available on my website. So definitely, if you are a business owner looking at starting it up, this is a great book to get you started and to give you some ideas on how to stay focused. Great. Thank you both so much. This has been an incredible conversation. I hope everybody got so much out of it like I did, and I wish you all a great day.